from Darlington. So the question you ask yourself is, yeah. what is she doing married to me? It's true, isn't it? This is why I love alcohol. Ow. What was that? I just kicked the chair. My apologies. Uh, ladies and gents, this is the moment you've been waiting for. It's, it's the moment you've waited for. The, the moment you've waited for. Oh no, oh no! You were getting me to feel it the other night. The mitten! <laughs> Great, good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. One, two. Yeah, now you're right. Not Sunset Beach. Okay, Sunset Beach. There you go. Sunset Beach. There you go. See? Do you know what? I like it. It's nice. It's this. Does it sound wrong? Wrong. That's blue. No, what shade of blue is that? Blue? It's a stone. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> That's funny. It's episode 99. We have returned. We should actually have 99s. We should have... Oh, don't say that. Oh. I want a whippy. <laughs> Does everybody know what a 99 is if you're not from, from the UK? You see, for me, a 99 is a whippy. Yeah. With a flake in it. That's correct. So when I just went, I want a whippy, that was in the correct context. Yeah. yeah. And I haven't had a 99. I haven't had I a haven't really had good a... 99 for no, a long time. I haven't. Because the problem with whippies is quite it's often... It's not real ice cream, is it, Mr. Whippy? It's not. N no, no. It, well, it, it's like watered down ice cream, isn't well, it? Well, I think Mr. Whippy is like powder. I think it's a powder that right. they add water to. Right. I well, don't think it's actually real ice cream. Do you know what? But I like it. <laughs> It's nice. <laughs> and the ones I love the most is the lemon top ones. Oh, yeah. They're great. Yeah. And I don't think I've had a you lemon top in about those, 20 years. You can get those that swirl two colours, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That too, that yeah. too. Which beaches were you going to? Oh, Mablethorpe? No. no. It might have been. It might have been. Who knows Mablethorpe Beach? More likely Beach. Skegness. I've been, been to Mablethorpe Beach once. Oh, I've been a few times. Mom, and it was shut. My mum and dad used to live in Mablethorpe. It's a lovely beach at Mablethorpe. Yes, I know, it's long. It's, we went once. It's, it's a phenomenal beach. We yeah. drove once and it was the longest drive in the history of the world. Did we go It was once? like driving across the Sahara. Was mum and dad in Mablethorpe when we they, first met? They'd gone there and they were staying in a caravan or something. Oh, like yes. Yes. Yeah. And at I the time, I, had, I made a, 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 a rookie mistake. And we had your... Jeepy thing. We had, a jeep, we had a jeepy thing which you could take the back off. Yeah. And I thought, oh, you know, we're driving to the beach. In mileage, it's not too far. I'll take the back off. It'll be lovely. What a mistake that was. Yeah. Because that road was like windy, windy, but it also was. really slow traffic. And you couldn't put the back on without stopping the car. Well, or I, did you not take it with you? No, it was Because it was a solid top. It was yeah. solid. So lift it off. So you didn't stick even it in take the garage. it with us? No. Oh, right. No. I remember. Last night, if we'd been able to turn the camera on at a... <laughs> Where's this going? <laughs> at about quarter past nine, you would, have, oh, right. you would have caught me on a soapbox. And, and I have kept hold of that soapbox and I brought it today. And that's because stark realisation time. Genuinely, genuinely massive life moment of realisation of stupidity. Right. That's a lot of information. It is, isn't it? And it all stems around, it stems around two things. I have a natural aversion to certain movies and, and a lot of musicals. Mm. And this actually fits with, with you and your general approach to life. Yeah. You feel guilty when you're happy, don't you? I do. And it makes me panic. And, and actually, yes, that's probably got worse yeah. since we've been ill. Because yeah. you know, we were talking yeah. about this last yeah. night and Kay was saying that she worries that if she allows herself to be happy, that then something bad will happen yeah. and that will ruin the happiness. Yeah, I do. That does fit with my aversion to watching these certain films and certain musicals because what I don't want to do, and it's definitely worse since being ill, but it's been mm. the case all my life. And if you're um, honest, too, yeah. you have always fought against yes. silliness. I have. 
So the question you ask yourself is, yeah. what is she doing married to me? <laughs> it's true, isn't it, really? But that just shows you, all her life she's been trying to break out. <laughs> she's been trying to free herself. She's been trying to come alive. Yes. Now, what happened last night was, it, just through us talking, I expressed for the first time ever the reasons why I have a natural aversion to certain things. Mm. And that's because when you go and see a musical, or some films, to be honest, those types of films are becoming less and less because films now seem to be more about realism and darkness. Well, and this is what we were talking about. <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Yeah. You go and see a film. When I go to the cinema, I expect to be taken away from myself yeah. and taken to a wonderful place. Yeah. I don't really want to go to a dark place, do you? No. No. Absolutely not. Similarly, when I go to the theatre, I, I don't, remember... I don't want to be sad. No. I, don't, I don't want to life's, sit in the cinema crying. Life's full of, life's full of enough of that. I'm sad enough. I'm sorry, <laughs> but, it. you Stop know. It. The reason why I have this aversion is because sometimes I'll see something and it will show me a rose-tinted view of the world yeah. that when the curtain comes down or when the lights come up in the cinema... I can't have it anymore. Yeah. I have to walk back out onto the street yeah. and I'm back to real life. I get that. The, the question that you ask yourself is, and this is going to sound silly, why can't life be more like a musical? Yeah. And this is what we were talking about last night. Now, you, you said something interesting as well. You know, we spoke at length, and we're not going to t t t today, so, so don't worry, but we spoke at length last episode on... The Greatest Showman and how much mm. you'd enjoyed it. And you said to me last night, well, tell me... When I was first watching the film in the cinema, I suddenly had this realisation. At first, I was, I was kind of fighting against myself because I thought, this is just stupid. You know, it's just silly and it's, you know, the story's all wrong and what is this singing, you know, what is this dancing in this era all about? But then I got to a point and I just looked at these people and I thought, do you know what, you know, there's this huge cross section of, of characters with all of these issues, you know, all of these problems that in modern day, you know, in the modern day world, I expect all of these people would suffer with depression and anxiety and all the rest of it. But they were all living. They were, and I said to Dan, you know, they were really living, these people, rather than a lot of the time, I just feel like I exist. I don't really feel like I'm living. And, you know, these people were just embracing these characters, were just embracing life. All right, you know, they were singing and dancing all the time, but, you know, my point is that they were just really living. And so... And they were living in the moment. That's the thing. And that's a huge thing with dealing with things like anxiety, that, you know, you're always told that you should live in the moment and that grounds you. We will all have had experiences like that when we've gone to the cinema and we've watched or we've gone to the theatre and we've seen something. You watch people, like I said a moment ago, it is a, it's a rose-tinted view of the world. Oh, yeah. And that comes back round to why can't life be more like a musical. And immediately, you start throwing up the reasons why, don't you? Well, we all just can't suddenly burst into song at any moment, can we? Musicals always end happily. But all those reasons are total rubbish because life can be like a musical. I said to Kay yesterday, there's been moments in our life which have been as happy as any of those moments that you watched in The Greatest Showman or yeah. whatever your film might be. Yeah. The day we met, the day we got married, and you then start to say, "Oh well, those are those are high points in your life." Last Wednesday was one of those days. It was. You know, all we did last Wednesday was we had the opportunity to take a day together. Yeah. We just went for a walk, had some lunch, walked around the shops. I don't even think we bought anything, and and that was it. That's all it was. But it was a moment that was taken mm -hmm. unexpectedly, mm -hmm. and that felt as high. On it, didn't it? It did. It that, did. That moment and felt as vibrant yeah. as any moment just, in it, The Greatest Showman. Yeah, and it, we, you know, it just took us away. And we were very much in the moment, weren't we? You know, we Absolutely. went to this my question, in that moment. My question to you again is, why can't life be more like a musical? Well, I'm, I'm going to give you the answer. It can. And it can because you can take those moments 
at any at any time. Mm. Yes, we've all got responsibilities. We've all got things that we have to do. But what you can do is you can take those moments, you can grab them with both hands, and you can do something that you love. And we love to get out, mm. and we love to go for a walk, mm. and we love to talk. It might be something different for you. But I remember someone once said to me, find out what you love and do it as often as you can. Yeah, you know, and we, we like Dan said, we didn't spend any money. We, yeah, all right, we had lunch, but, you know, it's not really a huge amount, was it? No, we... you should take the opportunity to make your life more like a musical. Because what it does is it just instills hope and happiness it does, and joy. And then, you know, I said to you the following day, I was like a bit mm, like this, because we'd had such, such a great day. And I said and to her, but that doesn't matter, does it? Because there will be another one of those yeah, days to yeah, look forward to. Yeah. It might be next month, it might be next week. Who knows when it might be? The beauty of these situations is you don't know when they're going to arrive. No. The problem is we shut ourselves off to them. And the reason why I think we shut ourselves off to them, and this is the reason why I think that films like The Greatest Showman, when they appear, you know, La La Land did this as well to a certain extent, but The Greatest Showman has done it even more, is it gives the opportunity for people to just get away. You know, when you look, we spoke as well last night about how life teaches you that you should not be silly. It it's teaches true. you that you shouldn't play with toys, that you shouldn't... As an, as an adult, obviously, That yeah. you shouldn't do crazy things, yeah. that you shouldn't laugh at me when I say something totally stupid that's completely out of context. Mm. context. Mm. It teaches you not to do these things. And I fall into this trap too. I do all the time. But I really do think that last night was a key moment mm. for me in my life because I've always thought that that wonderful view of life that mm. you see at the cinema or you mm. see on the stage that you can't have it you can you can can't you yeah you see and it's really it's really really hard i find it really really hard and dan said to me this morning he said you know don't forget what we said last night and just try and you know well, embrace you... do something every day that where you let yourself go where you let yourself go and i find that really really hard because as I said before you know I, I constantly think that if I do that and allow myself to feel joy and to feel happiness that the next minute is all going to be taken away and, and something bad's going to happen again and that's all part of the whole anxiety thing isn't it and it is, it is but, but it's also more... part of it's part of modern life. It is part of and modern it's wrong. life, yeah. And, and, you know, we started saying about a lot of films these days and a lot of series and things like that are very dark. And yeah. why do people think that people will enjoy being sad? Because that's being... what they see and that's what they experience. I, you, 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 we you do. Are... Well, we see that every day in our own lives, we don't do. we? And we deal with that every day. Now, when I, I want to be taken away from that. Absolutely. You know? We all know, don't we? You know, when... And we know, you know, as well as anyone, when when things are darkest, you know, it feels truly awful. Mm. But then you do come out the other you side. You do come out the other side and it's just getting over that darkness, isn't it? It and is. But the other way of looking at it is as well, and you know, I've probably said this before, but do you know what? There was a part of me which at least you're living. Well, it's true, at least, you know, and you... You could go through life like this, couldn't you? You could just go through life yeah. where nothing exciting happens and nothing particularly depressing happens. And in happens. all honesty, that was probably my life before I met Dan. Yeah. Whereas now, do you know, there honestly was a point where I was sat and, you know, I've got chemo going into my arm and I genuinely thought, well, you know, at least I've experienced this. At least you... At least I know well, what it's like. Yeah, you know, you're living, aren't you? Yeah. And... What you mustn't do... And the, the mistake that, that, you know, you fall into so easily is you look too far forward and that then starts yeah. to make you worry about yeah. things. Yeah. So, you know, if you're of that mind and you, you know, worry starts to creep in and it's impossible for you to think too far into the future, like we have been and still are to a certain extent, just focus on the day. The underlying um, sort of message from, from me personally to myself is this, and you know, it, it's it's us, you know, this is what we were talking about last night, and this might be something that you can get on board with, it might be something that you really can't get on board with, but that's quite simple. We are going to make our lives more like a musical, and we're gonna do that by, <laughs> it might only be one minute of every day, Kate is gonna just let herself totally go, and, and <laughs> or she's gonna try to, she's gonna try to at the very least. What am I going to do? You know, another thing that you can throw up. Life's not like a musical because we don't break into song. That's where you're wrong. 
At any moment, you can put on a piece of music and you can break into song, can't you? Could. Your soundtrack to your life could be whatever you want it to be. Mm. So make it something amazing. Because that's what I'm going to do. It's an interesting time for us at the moment because we're, next episode, we hit episode 100. And it makes you look back on the it past. Does. But what it's, it's not necessarily a good thing. It's a terrible thing. Yeah. <laughs> but what it's making me do more, and this really has been, it, it's been what's sort of sat wrong with me the whole process of looking back, and that is, we're just getting started. You know, I sort of feel good that it's going to be episode one hundred and one, episode one. Yeah. You know, you yeah, hear it in there. Yeah. We're just getting started. You know when you look back we've learned so much over the last four years doing you know this doing what we do you know if you go back and you look at episode one two three I was saying to Kay the other day I just I was saying you know I knew nothing I had no idea we had no idea about production about how to put together a really good show and you it's, won't until you do something well it's so it's so cool and so exciting to think that we've taken the time and you know we've been through the the <laughs> the bad decisions where where Kay's watched it and uh, she's gone. Nah, That's awful. No, nah, that wasn't good. <laughs> that wasn't good. And the the beauty of the 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 production style and the growth of what we've done is it. Whilst I'm the one who sits there and edits, it's something we've done together mm. because you know Kay is critical. <laughs> In a good way, in a good That's way. very nice, isn't no, it? No, well, no. If, it, if, something, if I don't like something, I'll tell, I'll say. What you... is the point in doing anything in life if you're not going to do it to the best of your ability? Mm. There is no point. Well, that's what you always teach your children, don't you? That, and that you know, as long as you've, you've done your best, then that's brilliant. What we have to do as a society, <laughs> as a race, is we have to stop putting up those boundaries mm. which change our children, change the people who we were. You know, Kay said to me last night, you would never have wanted to get up on stage and, and sing a song. Well, actually, that's not true because you've said to me many times that you'd love to be able to sing. I would. I so love singing. I guarantee you there will have been a time. Yeah. Who knows what, it, yeah. what song it may have been. It may have been Duran Duran. You know, who knows what it may have been. Something when you were 13, 14, yeah. you'd have been singing your heart out and imagining being on stage and singing that song. Yeah. But then life squashes it. Yeah. And tells you that that's a stupid idea. We've well, got no, to... nobody ever told me that I could do that. And that's half the problem, isn't it? I think that was the problem. Mm. We live in a world, there's lots of bad stuff, but my goodness, there's so much good stuff. Mm. And the good stuff is this. Whatever your dreams are, you can make, mm. you can make them mm. come true. And we always say that to Bryony, don't we? We always say to her, you know, you, whatever you want to do in life, Go and you know you can go and do it. The, Don't the, think that you can't do something. I wish I could remember where I heard the find what you love and do it as often as you can. Yeah. Because that is such an important thing. You know, if every one of you who watches this spreads that message right. to ten people. Oh right, yes. We will touch a hundred thousand people. That's true. And yeah, you imagine yeah. if there's a hundred thousand people, then go and tell another ten people, and then go and tell another ten people. That's how you change mm, the world. He mm, mm. said. So, it sounds crazy, but it's not, is it? It's no, not. No. And this is the problem with society right now. 24-hour news cycle yeah. of total dirge. It is. But I, we don't, I don't watch the news. Shut yourself I, off to it, I people. I never watch it. And I used to, but I, you know, I don't even put on the local news at like tea time. Don't even do that anymore. I know. Because I can guarantee that there will be something in it that will make you feel sad. Yeah. And it's... More than likely, it's something that you can have no impact on, yeah. doesn't affect your life personally, yeah. yet will bring you down. And I just think, well, what is the point? What well, is the someone, point? Someone might say to you that it's important that I'm aware of these things so that I can then set about changing them. Well, I'm going to argue with you and I'm going to say that it's more likely that you will just become depressed yeah. by that news and then you will have no chance of changing that. So what I'm going to say to you is... Do what we said a moment ago. 
spread joy and happiness to 10 people, yeah. encourage them to do the things yeah. they love, get them to spread it to another 10 people, and that's how we'll stop some of the bad things happening mm. in the world. Mm. Only worry about the things that you can influence. That I know, can. and that, that was another thing I remember reading loads of times, you know, there's no point worrying about something if you can't do anything about it. I'll, I'll leave you with this final thought, and that is a really simple one. The reason why the greatest showman was so successful, and this is a fluffy, crazy, <laughs> badly musically written <laughs> film, but it is joyous and colourful, yeah. catchy tunes, yeah. great dance routines. You know, it, it's just a ball of loveliness. Why has it been so successful? Because secretly, everyone just wants to be happy. Yeah. So I let's make true. them happy. And That's what I'm that, going to do. It, that, oh yes, it's our plan. Speaking of happiness and exuding it. My Bombini pattern came out. So it's now available on Ravelry. Thank you to everybody who went and purchased it already. And thank you to my lovely test knitters. So yeah, it's out there. And I, I mean, I really enjoyed knitting it. And I, you know, I knit three of them, one after another. It's quick, it's fun brilliant for gifts you don't need a, a lot of yarn you know you can use some lovely Brooklyn Tweed Loft if you want to splash out but likewise you can use a more affordable yarn like the Drops Fable so yeah I'm really pleased with that. I really really love how this yarn feels you've just finished your oh I don't know if it's gone out yet Oh, it might have gone out you've just finished your, your review oh, right. of, of Loft and I've got to say you like it I, I really love how it feels. Oh right I really, I'm getting I, more warmth off it today than I did the last time I put this on. Yeah, I, I liked the loft, but I just didn't love it. That was working with it, wasn't it? Yeah. Because it looks great. Yeah, and it blocked beautifully. And I think I just like a yarn that's a little bit more weighty. It's a very light yarn. You know, it feels like it'll float away. And I think I just like something with a bit more weight to it. But it was, you know, it's made a beautiful finished item. We mentioned last episode, and I stopped you saying anything about what's going on this summer. Oh. Now, we had a shock because we thought yeah. that we did the summer of socks last summer. It wasn't. But of course, we didn't do anything last summer because of the state I was in after my operation. Yeah. It was the summer before. It was the summer before. So. It's two years ago almost. Can you believe that, that we did the summer of socks? I, I couldn't believe that. But yes, hashtag SOS is back. Yeah. Because this summer, what are we doing? Well, this summer we're going to have, we thought it would be really fun to have a three month knit along like we did with the Summer of Socks. So it will run from the 1st of June through to the end of August. So it's three full months. And this time we are going to have the Summer of Sorcery. Yes. Hey, now just lean back because someone has to make a little entrance. Yes, there he is. He's... I was actually looking there. <laughs> you can't see it. <laughs> I was thinking, what? Oh, I'll see you. <laughs> he has a wand. Oh, brilliant. He has an owl. Yeah. And he has a lovely sorting hat on his head. Oh. Oh, yes. He's looking rather special. So, yes, Summer of uh, Socks had its own little logo, and the Summer of Sorcery also, he's got dressed up specially for it. Oh, yes. Brilliant. So, what, what we thought was that... It, it's going to be a knit along. It's, it's, a, it's a very broad sort of spectrum. So basically you can knit or crochet. You know, whenever we say knit, just you should always take it as read that we include crochet in that. So knit or crochet, anything you like that has a magical theme. So that could be the name of the pattern. It could be the name of the yarn. It could be the colours of the yarn that remind you of something. It could be, you know, a unicorn themed yarn or fairies or anything at all that you think of as magical that will qualify. So you can have multiple entries. You can knit as much as, much as you want. Um, you know, you can have one entry per finished item. So it will, yeah, so it'll run three months, 1st of June till the end of August. Whips are allowed. So as long as you've not, as long as you haven't completed more than 50%, say, of, you know, the item. So it's a pair of socks. As long as you haven't cast on the second one, that's fine. So you can finish off all those works in progress 
that have got a magical theme. So, you know, if you wanted, you could totally theme it Harry Potter and you could, you know, you might have a bunch of yarn that's Harry Potter themed and you think, all right, I'm just going to knit my way through that. It doesn't have to be Harry Potter, of course. Anything magical at all, like I say, it could be fairies, wizards, unicorns, anything really yes, yes. that you see as magical. And we just thought that would be really, it's just fun, isn't yes. it? I actually enjoy the anticipation of something it's a lot a bit like more. Christmas. It's very much like Christmas or going away on holiday. I anticipate, I, I enjoy the anticipation of it much more than the actual sort of being in it. So let's um, talk to each other about what, what our plans are, what we're gonna um, knit, what yarns we're, we're thinking of using and get ready for the summer of sorcery. Absolutely, yes. I can't wait, I'm excited already. So, and there'll be prizes, I've got some prizes accumulating already. That's what I just wanted to say actually. If you are a yarn dyer, bag maker, pattern designer, and you've got anything that you would like to donate to this knit along, then just get in touch and we would love to accept anything you would like to give to us for the prizes. Yes, cool, that would be great. Yes. Hey, look. Yes. We need to find Have out. Have actually seen any Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Oh goodness, I've started a new pair of socks for Dan. And let me tell you, this has been a revelation. And I shall tell you why. It's a pair of opal socks. That's no great shock and that's no revelation. <laughs> um, here it is. I've done, I'm up to the heel flat now. Isn't it lovely? And you've probably seen this particular colorway before. I think it was a very popular one a little while back and you can still get this. I got this from a German website. So if you just Google it, then you know you should be able to find it if you wanted to buy, to buy some. So it's the colorway is, it's one of the... Hun Hundertwasser. Thank you. Look Who's an artist, apparently. I didn't realize, but I asked my German nephew when he was over at Christmas who this person was and he told me he's an artist. So it's this particular range from Opal. And this colourway number is 2104. And I'm not sure if that's the colourway name that's just there. I don't know. Maybe. I will hold it up. But it is 2104 is the number. And I think it looks kind of festive in a way. Yeah. There's reds and greens and golds. It's really lovely. When I cast this on, within a couple of rows, I said to Dan, do you know what? This yarn isn't the same as, as Opal I've been knitting with recently. And this is something that, well, I just hadn't thought about this. And it's funny. Well, you wouldn't think about it, would you? Until you no. experience it. And the only way you can experience no. it is by getting out some of the old stuff. And I haven't, I've been knitting more with sort of newer Opal because I tend to hoard the older stuff because it gets discontinued as you know with opal and you can't get it again so I tend to hoard the older skeins and just knit with the newer. Because I've just finished a pair which you'll see later with newer, a newer opal yarn I could just tell a huge difference. The yarn base is not the same and obviously I've got no evidence of this but I've compared it to the, to the newer stuff. This is much plumper you do have evidence though, and the evidence well, I do is have evidence you knit. I've got new skeins, and, and I've knit you were just with talking it. about how the knitting of socks with the newer stuff, yeah, the sizing's coming out wrong. Yeah, and I was having to knit, and I, I don't think I even acknowledged this. I, I just thought it was maybe my gauge, but recently I've been having to knit more rows to get the right foot length for Dan, and that never really, you know. I just I just didn't associate that with it being the yarn. I just thought, oh, maybe my gauge has changed. But actually, when I've looked at this and compared the stitch count to, you know, the other, there is a difference. And, you know, this is, the older opal is, it's thicker and it feels cushier and it feels a bit more woolly and it's just plumper. And I just remember, you know, when I cast it on, I started knitting with it. I said, I think you, you'd gone out or something and... Those blue socks that you knit me, is that opal? Yes. We've gone is, through them. This is another thing. I knit down a pair recently. Can Very you remember recently. the the 
the pair of opal that had that sort of fault in it and it had like a black sort of line running through. It wasn't that base that had gone through. I used a solid colour of opal for the heels and toes and it's gone through on the toes. And I've got opal socks which I've worn just as much. That you've had for years. That I've had for years that aren't even... No, and that's, nev no that's never happened. I couldn't believe it. And it's like a proper hole, you know, it's worn through. That, you know, with casting Something this on. Something's clearly not right well, at the, the House you of know, Opal. The base has changed, I think. You know, why would you do that? I don't know why you would do that. The yardage, <laughs> the yardage is the same. You know, is it cheaper for them, maybe? There could be any number of decisions, but a company that size will probably make decisions on profit margins. Maybe so. But then the other thing that I've noticed with Opal as well is that you don't very often get colourways like this anymore. This, to me, is proper Opal. Nowadays, it's more just kind of stripes of different colours. It's not as appealing to me and it, it just makes me sad. Yeah. You know how much I've, I've always gone on about Opal and, and about how much I love it. And it was only knitting with this that made me think, this is why I love Opal. I've got quite a bit of older yarn, so that's fine. But I just think, you know, once that's gone, it's gone. And if they don't, you know, if they carry on using the, the base that they've got now, then, you know, I won't be able to knit with this lovely yarn for much longer. And that kind of makes me sad. But anyway, I'm, I'm really, really loving it. And I'm up to the heel now, and I'm gonna put in a cream heel. I thought that might be nice because there's quite a lot of cream in it. And this actually is Osterman Step. You see, I didn't want to use the, the opal, the solid opal that I've got, because it, you know, because of everything I've just said. So I thought I'd use Osterman Step because I've knit down two pairs of socks, I think, in Osterman Step. Years ago, it's quite a few years ago now, and you still wear them, and they're absolutely fine. Yeah, so it's good stuff. It is good, and it's very soft. It's the one that's got jojoba. I don't think you pronounce it jojoba, do you? No. <laughs> jojoba oil in it. It's very soft and lovely, so I'm going to use that for the heels and possibly the toes as well. I'll just see how I feel when I get there. But I'm loving it. 2.5 millimetres like normal. Chow goo mini twists. As per usual. Wonderful. Dan Jones. Yes. What's on your needles? Oops. I did it again, baby. Oh, you're not going to believe this. Look, I analysed the situation. I slapped him silly. And I now understand the reason why I did this. You may remember a little while ago, I finished this sock. And I might, might have forgotten to do the heel turn. So you would have thought that when I finished that sock and cast on this one, that I would have remembered to do the heel turn. You know what he's gonna say. But I didn't. I did it, Brittany. I did it again. Oops, I did it. I couldn't believe it. And it was hilarious. I'm knitting away. And I must admit, I was thinking, there's a lot of stitches on these needles, which is exactly what I thought last time. <laughs> But I still carried on knitting, and I think I knit to exactly the same point. And it was after quite a few decreases. And I looked down and I thought, I've done it again. And for a minute I'm thinking, look, think back, you can't have, you can't have, you're not that stupid. But then... Apparently he is. Apparently I am. I was so ashamed, I couldn't even tell Kay, who was sat right next to me at the time. So, tricky manoeuvre. Because I knew <laughs> that if I put it down slowly... She would think that I was saying I was sleepy and I wanted to go to sleep now. But if I put it down too quickly, she would then start asking questions about why I put it down so quickly. And then that would start a conversation along the lines of, you know, where I would have to just tell her that I'd been an idiot. Luckily, my brain must have just But I blank. timed it to perfection. After all the years together, I know the perfect speed to swap project bags without arousing suspicion. <laughs> That's a skill, isn't it? We all know that skill. So I managed to put it down and I, I booked up enough courage to tell her via text the he next day. He text me. <laughs> he was upstairs and he texted me. I didn't have the courage. So I told her and she ripped it back for me. And I fixed it. I fixed it. I Yay! fixed it. And do you know what? I have realised why I have forgotten to do the heel turn twice. And I, I'm going to tell you. Up until this pair of socks and the stree, it is 
the first time I have knit a pair of socks and not been following the pattern straight down. Which is a cool situation to be in, isn't it? Because I've now got to a point in sock knitting where I can go, right, okay, what texture do I want? What heel flap do I want? And what toe am I going to put in? So if you're not following a pattern, you don't get to a bit which says, now do the heel turn. I have always, thinking back, been surprised when I got to the bit which said heel turn. Genuinely, I have. Mm. I'd get to the bit and think, oh! <laughs> do you know what? Better do that. Yeah, honestly, I've thought, oh, I've done the heel flap, so it's done. So it's always something which just hasn't registered in my brain. Well, now, after making the same mistake twice, I hope it has registered. But no, no, heel turn, done. And um, I've nailed, I'm so happy, Kate, I'm so happy I'm nailing this full on. Yeah, looks Without good. looking at the tutorial. That looks good. Corners, seriously, yeah. seriously. Yeah, it does look Kay's two-stitch sorcery pickup. <laughs> I should have called it that, shouldn't I? The sorcery pickup. The pick sorcery pickup. Nailing it. So, job done. Thank you very much. Excellent. I love this colourway so much. And I love everything about this sock. It's just the, the loveliest. It's been on the go some time. Oh, shut up. You should get that finished. Seriously. You probably would have finished it if you'd not, if not yeah, had yeah. to rip back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Twice. Absolutely guaranteed. Oh, there's, she brought a blocker. There's, there's, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. It's fine, I've seen it before. But they fit lovely. I am, I am. You ham? <laughs> I am coming around now more to socks. <laughs> I thought you'd given in on socks. I, oh, I have, I have, I have, oh. I have. But, you know, as the Dan Laura project finished, I had a, a sort of intense dislike. And I, I won't lie to you, I am going to be thrilled when I've cast <laughs> these two off. And even more thrilled when they only have one pair of socks on the needles. But I will now knit those socks, these those one pair of socks on the needles, and I will enjoy it. Mm. Whereas, you know... you've not got an agenda. I haven't been enjoying it. But I totally get why you love knitting socks so much. Mm. Because there's so much joy in a sock. There's so much to get your teeth into and enjoy. You know, there really there's is, so isn't there? So many options. I think so that's options. the thing. Textures, and heels, toes. Beautiful yarns. You know, beautiful yarns. Quick projects, yeah. if you're K, you know, that, or, or other people. Um, just <laughs> not, not you. Just not me. It, it, for me, I much prefer, as you know, something to get my teeth into. And my next project, which I'll show you in a moment, is something to get your teeth into. What that was else? good timing, I just finished that. It's on your needles. It's not a row, is it? I'm working on the pink fluffy mittens that I showed you last time. I actually forgot that I'd cast these on. <laughs> and I just remembered, day before yesterday, and I thought, oh my goodness, I've got that, <laughs> that pair of mittens on the go. So I dug them out of the knitting basket and finished the first mitten. You haven't seen this. You were getting me to feel it the other night. The mitten! <laughs> yeah, but I haven't finished it. Oh, okay. I finished it yesterday. Lovely, lovely. So I finished one. Oh, look. It's a lovely look. colour. It's very pretty. It's pretty, isn't it? It is. And what I like about those is they're subtle. It is so subtle. So you're, you're going to wear that and it's subtle and it'll go with lots of things. Yeah. This is the world's simplest mitten by Tin Can Knits. I'm doing this yarn, I said last time, but the yarn I'm using is my own hand dyed and this is a DK, it's an MCN DK. And then I'm holding it doubled, uh -huh, uh -huh. with lovely kid silk haze. So it's kind of like a heavy DK, I suppose. I don't, I feel like it's not as thick as a worsted. So I'm doing the DK um, gauge size and I'm doing the women's small, which I think is coming out a bit bigger than a small because it's, you know, this, I think this would fit somebody with bigger hands than me and mine aren't particularly big. So that's the first one done. And the, the yarn I dyed is this, as you can see, it's this really pretty tonal sort of ballerina pink with occasionally you'll get a little fleck of purple. I don't know if you can see there, there's a few little flecks of purple. And I actually even went back and did the thumb straight away. I normally leave the thumbs until I've finished both mittens because I just don't really enjoy it that much. It's a bit of a faff, isn't it? I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna put that down and cast on the next one. I'm gonna do the thumb and they don't even take very long, do they? I don't know why I even avoided it. But I really like it. I think it's a lovely finished mitten. 
lovely so I cast on the second one straight away and I'm just literally on the rib and I'm knitting these on DPNs and I'm normally when I how are you finding those DPNs oh well I really like these DPNs they're just knit pro symphonies they're probably my favorite DPNs are they sticky? no not not particularly Can because I feel? What happens with wood is it, it polishes, oh, yeah. doesn't it? It's quite as you, it, they, they feel quite grippy when you first use them, when they're brand new. But the wool, I find, polishes the wood and makes them nice and nice and glidey. So I don't have a problem with it. And I do prefer a little bit of grip. But for the mittens, I'm actually knitting them on like four DPNs. Normally, when I knit socks on DPNs, I use five so that it's a square because I find that I don't get ladders or it's less inclined to get ladders when you work in a square as opposed to a triangle because I find that the joins are a bit more, um, you know, because the angle here is sharper. If it's a square, it's more like that, isn't it? And the stitches I find are sort of closer together. But when it's a triangle, there's a bit more of a gap, I think. So, but for mittens, it's been working really well. I think because the yarns may be thicker and there's not as many stitches on each needle. I think there's only sort of 12. I think it's 12, 12 and 14. So there's not as many stitches, I find. Second one on the go. This one, when I picked this one up, I'd only just knit the rib. It was literally as I'd left it last time. And I finished the whole mitten in one sort of session, really. That's brilliant. And then just finished the decreases and the thumb the next morning. So very quick project. It looks when I was knitting it, I thought that hand looks really long. And I knit it exactly to what the pattern said. And there is a bit of room at the top. You know, there oh. is a bit of room. But, you know, I'll make sure I give them to someone that I think has got a slightly bigger hands than mine. And I don't think it really matters if your mitten's a bit roomy, does it? No. No, well, you know, I prefer them a bit closer. You're going to get you, you guaranteed whoever you give those to, unless it's a small child, they're going to have bigger hands than you. Uh, right. Okay. Well, no, it won't be a small child. So I think I think you'll be safe. Yeah. Are you enjoying knitting them? Y yes. Or, oh. No, I am. It's a very simple pattern, though, isn't it? Oh, it's it's a very it's a brilliantly written pattern. It's yeah, great. I like all their and, patterns. Yeah, and actually, I really liked the way that they explain how to get your stitches back on the needle, because quite often I never know whether to pick up that stitch first and then knit around, or knit around and then pick up the stitch. I never really know what's the best method. And they actually said, put the, it's a free pattern this, said put the stitches back on your needles, knit around and then pick up a stitch. I was like, brilliant, because it just explains it. And quite often you don't get that explanation. It'll just say, you know, place the thumb stitches back on your needles, picking up a stitch in the gap and then you know go on to do whatever and i really liked that there was just that extra line of information they're great as well it's been really lovely to sit we we've, we've just well you don't know this i've just been talking saw, to yeah, Alexa. You've been, yeah you've been emailing yeah and they'll be featured in the next oh, issue of missability out, out this month right yes have you finished i have lovely well Oh, I believe you're gonna I believe, love this. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that I have been working to this moment for my whole life. Oh, get on! <laughs> the last 42 years have been building up to today, and why is that? Well, everything has come together into one perfect project. All the yeah. skills, you know, everything I've ever knit. You know, learning double knitting. What I'm about to show you. I always used to talk to students, music students, about who their sort of th their inspirations were. And you know, if you had a, if you had musical parents, who would they be? You know, two people that have influenced you and made you the musician that you are. Well, if you adopt that, it'd be an interesting question actually. Who who's influenced? Do you know what I know? Dave Grohl, yeah. Peter Erskine. Yeah, I would, have, yes. I would have guessed those yeah. two, actually. If I could have remembered their names, I would have guessed those two. With regards to knitters, 
My, my knitting parents, one of them is Kay, obviously, and the other one is Nathan. Because right. the skills that I'm applying You're here... You're not sure me and Nathan would ever be a couple. No. It's an odd thought, the, isn't it? The, the, the skills... Nathan, are, although no offence to Nathan. No offence like, to Nathan. He's a very, very handsome, handsome chap. man. Oh, jinx, we both said that. Yeah. The skills are double knitting and knitting. That's what it's pulled from, from me. Mm, you I, said that when you were knitting. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, also as well, this is the hardest thing I've ever done by... Mm. But but not but you've not had to ha you haven't asked me anything. No. Hey, Kay asked me something yesterday. I did, and I'll tell you what it was when I show you my next. Four project. years. I went upstairs. Nearly one hundred episodes, and for the first I time did. ever, she came and asked me something. I did. And I could give her an answer. He did. He I helped, actually helped. He helped me with my knitting. Yeah. Result. I'll tell you about it in a minute. So, what am I knitting? Well, it is. A colour work sweater. Have you got the pattern in there? I do, I do. I'll show it in a minute. And here it is. Now, I'm actually, I'm filming a series. It's called Journey to the Centre of the Yoke. The first one came out the other week. There's a link in the uh, show notes. You can see the lace, can't you? You can, you can. The lace is just starting to come through. So it's got a corrugated rib hem. Y you then work into a, a lace pattern through the body. And then it is a uh, yoke, colourwork yoke, with three different flower Flowers. bands coming round. Yep. The pattern is the Solia, and it was in Pom Pom a few years ago. It was knit by Susan B. Anderson about three years three ago. Three years ago-ish, I think Susan knit it. That's the pattern. And it is just, it's the perfect pattern for me. It's perfect, because it's touching you know, your knowledge is like touchstones in your head. You know, so I've got a bit of double knitting. You know, I've got a bit of lace, which you know I love. It's not actually double knitting, but the technique. No, no, no. It isn't double knitting. It isn't double knitting. I don't want people to think it's actually double knitting. It's not double knitting, but the skills you need to do corrugated rib, yeah. to me, are all about double knitting skills. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I would have been asking you questions every five minutes had I not learned, had Nathan right. not taught me how to double knit. Right. So, so whilst that corrugated rib is not double knitting, it is. It just is. Because your yarn same, management, it's all yeah, the same yeah. skills. So, you know, and the other thing that was interesting to both Kay and I is there is stretch in that. There is some stretch. I've never knit corrugated ribbing before and I've kind of avoided it because I'd heard lots of people saying, I mean, it isn't like normal rib in that it doesn't have the kind of stretch but this has got a it's okay it's that not is cool yeah that is cool it's really nice i, I can't and i can't is, even begin to tell you knitting that corrugated rib was really hard and i said to you this is hard yeah and you were like oh good hard bad hard and i wasn't sure mm. well all i'll say is I, I knit what the pattern told me to knit and i could have knit double this mm. and i'd have been happy to it's really fun and it, it does have a tendency to curl. But it won't do once it's knit and this. I think once full we've and it's given blocked. it a good blocking. Yeah. That even if it does curl a tiny bit, it's fine. I'm it not, won't, it'll be fine. No, I think it'll be once okay. Once it's blocked, it'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, if I block it, pin it, I think it'll be fine. And you know, doing some lace. You know, yeah, actually <laughs> Were it not for Robin, lovely Robin, Aww. from the Stitch Between Pages and her beating me then knit or forfeit, I wouldn't be knitting lace, you know? It and I love, true. I love knitting lace. Having lace in this is just great. Mm. And I think th that it will make such a lovely garment, you know? Because mm. I think it's going to look beautiful because the colours... It's, yes, let's, let's talk about the I've colours I've only got three here. Sadly. Oh, right. Because okay. all the rest are upstairs. So, what we're doing is, yeah, so the, the corrugated ribbon is two shades of grey and it's cast, no, it's not cascade, it's. Charisma, it's drops, drops charisma. charisma. Look at me go. I know. Look what's happened. You see, I knew it was a I'm C helping word. her with the knitting oh. and I'm, I know what on? the yarn is. What's going on? So, it's drops charisma, which is a DK, it's um, a superwash wool, but. It spit splices. It spit splices. Dan was like, he asked me about it. I said, well, it's a superwash wool, but actually looking at it, it looks quite woolly. So I'm going to try. So I just got two bits of the yarn and, and did it, and it spit spliced okay. Took a bit more, a bit more rubbing. Warmth. Yeah, and I kind of left it. I did it, and then I came back to it the next day just to check how strong it was, 
it was totally fine. So, so that to, to that, us says it doesn't have it's not, maybe as much superwash in it as... May, maybe it hasn't gone quite through quite the you know, this, the process maybe. Which is great. Which is brilliant. And it does feel, it doesn't feel like a superwash, I'll be no. honest. It feels... It feels quite woolly. It feels nice and woolly. I yeah. really like it. Which I think um, you want in an outer garment. Yeah. So we've got the two shades of grey and then the main body will be this lovely goldy mustard colour, which I think they look gorgeous together. And then the yoke, if I show you the schematic, this is not giving any of the pattern away, but the schematic is there. So this, the background to the yoke is cream. So we've just got a cream for that. And then the flowers are like three shades of pink. There's like a more maroony sort of color, a mid pink and then a light pink. And I just think the pink and the gold and the gray, I think it's, it's gonna be colorful, but not madly so, no, you know. No, it's I think lovely. It's gonna be lovely. I was feeling at sixes and sevens a little bit because you know, I've got through, pretty much I've got through the body of the Samantha and, you know, now it's going to be time to do the sleeves and, and all of those bits. So there's still, you know, a long way to go with that. But I, I was feeling a bit start. lost. Yeah, you were keen to start this, yeah. weren't you? I was so really... why not? You know, well, why not? Yeah. The reason why I felt confident in starting it too was I'm going through a bit of a process with regards to trying to get my gauge right for colour work. work and by the time I get to the colour work yeah. I'll have gone through the process that I set out on the first episode yeah. of Journey to the Centre of the Yolk. So And we're doing the size, I know I know people might want to know, we're doing, it says to wear it with, I think it was two to three inches of positive ease which I like, I don't like tight fitting jumpers or all this negative, be negative ease business, I'm not, I don't really like it very much so I think we're doing the 41 inch, which will give me, that will give me about four inches of positive ease, but that will allow for Dan's gauge if it's a little bit tighter. Well, you've just we, told me off for having a loose gauge. Yeah, well, with, yeah, I think he's kind of maybe going a little bit the other way, but I don't mind it being big. I'd rather have it loose because I'll probably wear like a t-shirt underneath it. So that's it. That is my second and it'll be those will be the two garments that i knit this year it'll be the samantha and, and the solia because it's going to take me all year to I'd knit say these. that's probably well, enough you know, isn't it well oh absolutely absolutely but i think now you know i feel so at home with garments you know thinking of the irish coffee samantha now this one mm. that you know those two bags i think will be those two project bags will be my garment project bags oh, right, so you know okay. when i finish one we'll get another one in there right when i finish this one and you know maybe because cables are cool Oh yeah, I you love like, doing you cables. Love watching cables yeah. So maybe, you know, finish the Samantha, or do another cable jumper, mm. and then finish this one and do another. You know, maybe, maybe I'll be in a position. But you, do you know what? I don't, I really don't have an interest in knitting a plain knit yoke sweater. No. And I'm really pleased you that I've, I've got bored, to that. You know? Well, I'm pleased I've got to that point mm. where I know that I'm not going to enjoy that type of thing. So that probably does filter out an awful lot mm. of potential patterns that I mm. could knit. Mm. So, you know, it, it, in the time it takes me to knit this, it'd be good we to try and found, line yeah, up yeah. <laughs> the next couple. The next one. What else is on your needles? The last thing on my needles today is a new, another new cast on actually. I realized, and Dan made me realize this the other day that I just didn't have enough projects and that People are going to be going, what? <laughs> if you remember a few weeks ago, I finished tons of things and I just never replaced those projects. So I just didn't have very much on the needles and I just knew I had to cast on a few things. And I still feel like I need to cast on another couple of things. Well, we, 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 we so, know the um, optimum number is six. That's the optimum yeah, number Yeah, because then projects. you can rotate yes. three that you're working on and that, yeah. that seems a good number. Yeah. But three of my projects at the minute are blankets and they're kind of long-term things. So yeah, I kind of take this out of the equation and it only leaves like a couple of pairs of socks. So I, I cast this on just yesterday, actually. I've been looking for something for days and I was like, Do you know what, I've got to find something. And then I came across this and I thought, oh, that looks really nice. And I'm really enjoying it. It's a cowl. I'm not knit. I say I'm not knit a cowl for ages, but there's my bambini. <laughs> so you have it's technically a cowl, but this is a more traditional cowl. And it's the Arrow Cowl by Lisa Haynes. Hands? How do you say that, Haynes? 
Hans. Hannes. <laughs> there it is. You make of that as you wish. And you can see it's this two colour cowl, fingering weight. And that middle section there is mosaic knitting. Ooh! I've never done it. Exciting. So I thought that would be good. Yeah. So you have you have some lace. You can see there's some lace top and bottom, some stripes, and then mosaic knitting in the middle. And I thought that looks lovely. So I cast it on yesterday. And finding two yarns, actually, I did have a few choices in my stash. Not a huge amount because, I mean, she uses some solids. And I didn't have many that were solids. And I didn't really want to use completely solid yarn. The joy of a project for me is a lot of it is in the yarn. And I thought, oh, I just want to choose two really pretty yarns that will work, but are not completely solid. So that's what I did. So I've cast on. The one issue that I had was she doesn't tell you, she obviously tells you the size of needle, but she doesn't tell you the length of cord that she actually worked with. And I did go and look at the projects and couldn't find that anybody had specifically said, but that's not something that as a knitter you would think to put in your project notes, I don't think. And going on the number of stitches, I thought, right, okay, I'll try it on a 24 inch. So I've got the needles here and you'll see from this that it didn't work on a 24 inch. But I cast it on using Nitpix Sunstruck because I looked at the size and I thought, yep, yeah, that probably looks about right. But I was finding, I, I knew as soon as I'd cast on that number of stitches and I kind of stretched them around, it was quite, the stitches were quite stretched. There, there didn't seem to be enough stitches for that size of needle. So I knit a couple of rows, thought I'm struggling with this, it's going to be really uncomfortable knitting it on this. And then I went to look at my other needles and I saw that the Chow Goo 24 inch is actually a little bit shorter, not a huge amount. But you can see it's maybe about an inch, nearly an inch shorter, so I thought right okay that might help. So I transferred it onto the Chow Goo 24 inch, these are both interchangeables, but it, was, it didn't make that much difference. And then I spoke to Dan about it and I said, this wasn't the thing I spoke to him about, I'll tell you about that in a minute. I was like, oh gosh, you know, this is too stretched. I said, do you think there's too many stitches to just go on a 16 inch hat needle? And we looked at it and said, no, I think it'll be okay. So that's what I put it on and that's what actually what I'm knitting it on. Just a 16 inch fixed hat needle. I call it a hat needle because I don't know. Because you knit hats on them. Yeah, hats and, yeah, in this case it's a cowl. And actually it works. I would rather have the stitches scrunched up and a lot of stitches on there than stretched out, you know, because it's just you're having to push them around all the time. And this is working absolutely fine. So I'm using a just a Knit Pro Symphony 3.5mm fixed circular. Now I recently bought, I got curious about the, I think you, you pronounce it liquor, liquor needle. So I went and just bought a hat size needle because I thought I'm, you know, I'm most likely to use that. These are expensive. This cost me seven ninety nine. That's without postage. That's just the cost of the needle, as opposed to a Knit Pro Symphony, which is basically more or less half that price, or maybe a little bit more than half price. So it's expensive for starters. I cast it, I did try it, I cast on a hat with it. I, I don't like it. They're wooden, if any of you don't know, they're wooden. And this is the driftwood sort of colour, but they're birch. So they're effectively exactly the same as a Knit Pro, Symphony, Harmony, whatever you would call them. And I actually have heard a few people say, and I don't know this for definite because I, I did some research and I couldn't find out via the internet, that I've heard that these are actually made by Knit Pro. I don't know that for certain, so I could be wrong. I just heard a few podcasters saying that, and when I actually looked on the website, it doesn't tell you who actually manufactures them. But when you look at them, when you compare the sort of wooden bit to a Knit Pro Symphony, it looks the same, it's just a different colour. The difference is the cord for me, it's really thick. Why is that a good thing? I don't, well, I don't find it to be a good thing well, it's at not, all. It's not, is it? I, I just really, I really struggled with it. Yeah. 
it's just there's no you can you can see look it stays like that there's no it's very stiff I find it very stiff and when you compare it to the you know I, I went through all of my cables it's thicker yeah. So that's one of the differences, I think. I mean, I don't know what the interchangeables are like, but I'm guessing it'll be the same. But, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, one good thing is that the size is etched here on this black plastic bit rather than the needle where it just rubs off. Yeah, but we've all got... So I like that. But I, I didn't like the needle at all. The reason I bought this is because I just kind of think that, you know, is it just all hype? Are people buying these because of the colour? You know, and they are pretty. They're all sort of shades of sort of grey and brown. Look, they're meant to look like driftwood, and I think now they do a blue set and an amber sort of colour set. And to be honest, I think essentially it's the same thing. As... Driftwood's wood that is in the sea, isn't it? Yeah, it's not true. It's not made of driftwood. And I think that there's some confusion around that. I well, think, it would be. I think if, if you, I saw that on a packet, I think it was made with driftwood, well, and I'd I think, think, oh, I'm doing a good thing for the environment. I think you would, and I, you know, it obviously isn't made of driftwood, and it it, say, it does say on the website that it's made of birch. But I have heard a number of of people say, you know, it's made from driftwood. So I think initially people might have thought that they were made from driftwood, and that was maybe the appeal, and that was why they were more expensive. So I'm, I'm not keen on the branding of it, to be honest. I think it's a little bit deceiving. And I don't particularly like, it's very dark, aren't they? And this, it's this whole thing about darkness again. So I didn't like them, but it's, this is just my personal opinion, obviously. And I know there are lots of people out there that have said they really love these needles, which is why I wanted to give them a go. I don't like that they're priced so highly when essentially it's made of exactly the same things as a Knit Pro Symphony. You know, it's just a plastic cord and a birch needle There's never tip. a problem paying a premium for something if no. you're getting something for your well, premium. No, and if you really love them, then that's fine, isn't it? Because you feel like you've got your money's worth because you love them. From our experience From, point of view. Yeah. And they I, don't feel very nice. I, the, I, I, the, you know, I mean, I like the wooden tips. They were, they were fine. But you don't but like they're the no different. I don't like the colour. No. I mean, they're no different to Knit yeah. Pro Symphonies or Knit Picks Sunstruck. Yeah. I, I find I really like the Sunstruck because it's a paler wood. But I think that this needle and a Knit Pro Symphony are essentially the same yeah. tip. So I chose my two yarns for the Arrow Cowl. What needed to be a good contrast. So the two yarns I've chosen are Malabrigo Sock in Abril, which is like this gorgeous, grapey sort of tonal purple. It's beautiful. And then the lighter colour, it's by Sokusu. Sokusu O is the yarn base. It's actually from Whimsy, whimsy.co.uk. And it says Sarkusu O, which is 100% superwash merino. It's a very heavy skein. You get 115 grams and it's 380 meters. It's got a really tight twist and I think that's why it's so heavy. And this is prairie dusk, this color. So if I put them two together, this is the two colors. You probably can't see, but the prairie dusk has got um, sort of lavender shades in there which I think when they're together, we'll pick up on the purples that's in here. So I started with, oh no, <laughs> I nearly went in my teeth. I started with the Prairie Dusk and I cast on. So after all that needle talk, I'm using a Knit Pro Symphony 16 inch. And I'm just, I've just started the second repeat of the lace. You can't really, because it's all scrunched up, but you can kind of see. I love how the yarn's knitting up. I think it's really pretty. And the pattern suggests that if you, because it just goes straight into the lace, but it does say if you want to put a bit of ribbing on, then you can. So I did do that. I've done about four or five rows of a twisted one by one rib, which is what it suggested. So I went with that. And then it goes into this lace pattern, and then we do some stripes. The thing that I asked Dan, I've never knit a lace pattern where the, the um, start of your round moves. 
I just realized I'd never done that. I know that Dan had done that recently. And the way that it described well, more it- more recently, I'm still doing it. Still doing it? Yeah. The way that it described it in the pattern, I just wasn't entirely sure. You know, I was presuming that I did something and I just wasn't sure. So I went and asked him and he said, you do that. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh -huh. So you totally helped me. I did. And I'm really enjoying this. It's a really simple- Looks very nice. Yeah, it's a yeah, really, looks nice. really simple lace repeat. I haven't knit lace in- a too little, long. A little while, I think. And I don't, I'm sure I've said this before, but when I knit lace, I don't even try to memorise it. Because Neither I... Neither do I. Well, I know that you probably say you couldn't. But a lot of people do memorise the lace right. repeat. I suppose if you did it a the lot. The reason... Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's only a short repeat on this and you go obviously round a fair number of stitches so you could easily memorize it i think for each row the reason i don't do that is i don't like having to rely on my memory mm. to get it right and if you do it wrong you know tinking back is a bit of a devil isn't it so i when i'm on a lace row i literally have the pattern in front of me and i'm looking down right three stitches of that da, da, da. Next three stitches, da, da, and I do that. And Why do you go da da da? Because that's one, two, three stitches. You, you go da da da? No, I don't do <laughs> What you shouldn't fight against is muscle memory. Now, it depends how often you knit this round and round and round, but there normally comes a point no, in I mean, anything I, yeah. where if you think you know it, then you should double yeah, check. Yeah, that's what I'm probably doing. Yeah, so don't don't know. fight against muscle memory. I'm not fighting against it. No, good. I just don't make a conscious effort to try and remember the no, last repeat. That would be crazy. And it is charted. I'm going to learn it. It's charted, but it's written as well, and I'm following the written instructions just because I prefer I, that. I think you all know that I've gone on enough about that. But the chart is very clear, very simple. Quick knit, I think. You use about half of each skein, so all together, you know, it's like a full skein of fingering weight, which shouldn't take me that long, I don't think, to knit. I only cast this on yesterday, and it's going quite quickly. And I love this yarn. It's a very strange base, the one from Whimsy. Because of the high twist, can you see the little kind of... You probably you might not be able to see, but it has, like, little kinks. And it's where the yarn is so so highly twisted it's kind of kinking back on itself you can see how much spring it's got it reminds me of socks that rock if anybody's knit with socks that rock it reminds me of that base because that's a very high twist as well very nice it's quite silky i think it looks quite silky looking yeah yeah it's got a bit of a sheen to it really nice project cool there's lots to do today so oh. we're going to crack straight on with the pudding club. I think it's time for us to hand over to the lovely Kay in the kitchen to make some Winifred pudding. I think it's been way too long since we did some baking. We want to share with you some of the tastes of our childhood. These were the dishes that were served to us by our mums and our grandmas. We know our favourites, but we would love to know yours. So we're going to bake all of our favourite puddings. And at the end of the series, you can vote for your favourite. This year, why don't you join me for the Bake Reverse Pudding Club? So come on, let's get baking! Tackle a pudding first introduced to the world in Dr. Allinson's cookery book, published in 1915. As the Victorian era came to an end, the people of Britain were changing. Instead of the richness and excess of swatted dick, housewives wanted a healthier treat that also helped use up a household staple. Enter Dr. Thomas Allinson. He was a doctor and strong proponent of healthy eating. In 1892, he founded the Natural Food Company with the intention of producing and selling healthy goods. He bought a stone grinding flour mill in Bethnal Green in London and Allinson's Bakery was born. Dr. Allinson was a man ahead of his time. He wrote a book for married women in 1901, 
which advocated the equality of women and men and the right of a woman to choose the size of her family. In 1915, he released his cookery book, comprising healthy vegetarian recipes. One of those recipes was Winifred pudding, a delicious lemony treat which utilised leftover bread. Winifred pudding was also one of the first dessert courses that utilised the word pudding in its name. Victorians were used to eating traditional puddings. To give his new creation the greatest chance of catching on, Dr Allinson was one of the first people to call any dessert course a pudding. So let's get baking. The recipe was lost after World War II but rediscovered in 2012 by food historian Caroline Yeldon. It has since gone on to become a favourite in restaurants across Great Britain. We love it and we can't wait to see what you think. Baking motions, what we're going to need to make our lovely Winifred pudding. Nothing unusual, just the usual bowls, spoons, um, a rolling pin if you're not using ready rolled puff pastry. But the tin I will just talk about. I used, when I made this previously and it worked really well, I used one of these loose bottomed flan dishes. I think, they're called, I think it's called a quiche tin, flan tin, tart tin. I'm not sure what it will be called wherever you are, but it's metal. It's got this base that, as you can see, just removes really easily. So the diameter is nine inches, about 22, 23 centimeters in size. So that's the tin that we're gonna need to cook our lovely pudding in. So what about our ingredients? Okay, we're gonna need, first of all, some puff pastry. I mean, I would, I would never make puff pastry. It's a lot of work and really you can buy excellent puff pastries in the supermarket these days. This is a branded one, but you can buy supermarket brands as well. This is one that's ready rolled, so it comes on like a sheet and I just roll it out a little bit thinner, but you can buy it in a block. But in any case, we're going to need about 250 grams. So in this one, there's 320, so you'll just have a bit more than you need. We're then going to need some wholemeal bread. I've already whizzed this into breadcrumbs, as you can see. But there's about 48 grams, so, you know, 50 grams is fine. And depending on the size of your loaf, that might be one slice or it might be two smaller slices. But you want about 50 grams of breadcrumbs made from wholemeal bread not white, we need wholemeal. We're then gonna need some caster sugar. We're gonna need 85 grams of caster sugar, a nice juicy lemon, some milk. We're gonna need 100 mils, 100 milliliters of milk. I'm using semi-skimmed. If you've got whole milk, that's absolutely fine. I wouldn't use skimmed milk. So I'd use whole milk or semi-skimmed I'm using here. We'll need 85 grams of butter. You can use salted or unsalted. The recipe actually tells you to use unsalted. I don't like the taste of unsalted butter, so I always use salted, but that's entirely up to you. And then we're gonna need some lemon oil. This is natural extract of Sicilian lemon, as you can see. And I just picked this up in the supermarket. And then the final thing we're gonna need is two eggs. Okay, so let's get baking. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to take our milk, which I've warmed in the microwave. It just needs to be warm to the touch, not boiling hot or anything like that, just warm. And then we're gonna add that to our breadcrumbs. And just give it a little stir. And then we can just set this aside whilst we get on with the rest but what will happen in the sort of five minutes or so that this is just sat is that all that milk that you can see kind of at the moment just liquidy it'll all get absorbed by the bread which is what we want to happen so just set your bread aside and now we're going to prepare our pudding tin so we're going to take our pastry and if you've never seen this before, when you get by it in a roll, it just comes on like um, baking parchment, separated off, all ready rolled for you. It's brilliant. It saves you such a lot of time, actually, this. 
and all we need to do because this is not actually wide enough to fit our tin we just need to roll it out a little bit further which isn't any bother whatsoever and then take it off the sheet there'll be too much um, pastry here but that's fine and then we're just going to roll it this way because it's, it's wide enough this way we need to make it a bit more square at the moment it's kind of oblong so just gently roll it go from the middle out and then that way it should sort of roll out nice and evenly and actually I think it's quite nice to have just a thin layer of pastry we certainly don't like really thick pastry when you've got, got it in a pie or a tart if it does stick a little bit just throw on a bit more flour so just roll that out until it's going to be square enough to fit our tin so just make sure that you've got enough of an overlap that because it's got to obviously go up the sides here and that looks pretty good so now we just need to lift it up carefully the best way of doing this actually is take your rolling pin and just roll it onto your rolling pin pick it up pop it underneath and then on top and then we need to just ease it into the tin so to do that what I tend to do is lift it up because you don't want any air underneath so lift a section and get your fingers sort of underneath it and just push it down and because this you can see it's got a nice pattern around the edge if you then just ease it into all those little ridges it means that when it has cooked you'll get those little ridges around the outside of your pudding which is nice and you can see we've got quite an overlap but that's fine we're going to trim that make sure it's pushed nicely and that's uh, what you can do if you don't want to get little finger marks like I've got there you just pull off a bit of spare pastry you can actually use that to kind of push it into all the little crevices and then you won't get finger marks on it not that it really matters because no one's going to see it anyway because it's going to be underneath your filling there we go so that's all nicely in and now we just need to trim the edges so what I do for that is I just pop my hand underneath and just go around with a nice sharp knife and then you've got trimmings here that you know you could roll up and use for something else if you wanted to there we go so that's our pastry uh, our flan tin all lined with pastry so now you need to just pop that in the fridge just to chill it has been it is cold from the fridge anyway but we might as well just pop that back in the fridge while we get our filling ready first thing we need to do is we need to cream the butter with the sugar so I've got the softened butter in here it does want to be soft not straight from the fridge so if you've taken it from the fridge you know either just remember to take it out an hour before you want to bake or you can if you're careful just pop it in the microwave for like just a few seconds and then check it a few seconds and check it because it will melt in a second so we've got the softened butter in a bowl and we're going to add the caster sugar so that goes in to join it and now we're going to beat that until it's really nice and light and fluffy take a few minutes not too long if you've got an electric whisk it just takes a few minutes Okay, so we've beaten up the butter and the sugar until it's nice and light and fluffy and now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the two eggs which I've just beaten up and popped into a jug and we need to add these a bit at a time you know it will curdle if you put all of this the egg straight into the the butter and the sugar it will curdle that's not the end of the world if it does do that you know it, you'll, it will still produce a perfectly lovely pudding but if you can add it a little bit at a time 
takes a little bit longer but it is worth it because you will avoid the curdling. So just carry on beating, adding a little bit of egg as we go until we've incorporated all of your two beaten eggs. Okay, so we've got in all our eggs into the mixture and now what we need to add to it is our bread and milk that's been soaking and then we're going to add in the juice of the lemon and a teaspoon of lemon oil. So let's just add that in. It might seem a bit strange to be adding bread to what is essentially the start of like a sponge mixture but it does really work and especially the whole meal actually gives it a really nice flavour. I'm sure it wouldn't taste the same at all if you used white bread. So make sure you mix it really nicely in. I tend to just use my hand as a sieve but if you want to pre-juice it then go ahead and do that. And now we just need the teaspoon of lemon extract or lemon oil. Okay. It's so lemony this, it's lovely. And then just mix those in. smells so nice. All we need to do now is get our tart case, our pudding case, out of the fridge and then pour this into it and then we can pop it in the oven. So make sure it's really nice and mixed. Okay so I'm now going to add the filling into the pastry case and then we can pop it in the oven. So we're just pouring it in Make sure you get it all out. If you've got a spatula, I can't do anything without a spatula in the kitchen when I'm baking. And then just spread it out. All the way to the edges and get it nice and even. So now we're just going to pop that in the oven for about 30-35 minutes and you want it at about if you've got a fan oven, it's about 160 degrees C. I tend to put it in around about 170, 180 degrees C. You, you'll know your ovens, um, but generally it's that kind of medium oven. 160 to 180 degrees C. For about 30, 35 minutes, and you'll know it's done because the pastry will be all golden and puffed up around the outside. The, the filling itself will still have a tiny bit of like a wobble to it but it will be nice and coloured on top, which we will see when it's had its sort of half, half an hour, 35 minutes. So I'll pop that in. Okay, so it's had half an hour in the oven. What we're gonna do now, just for a final added little flourish, is we're gonna take it out and I've got a tablespoon of caster sugar. We're just going to sprinkle that caster sugar on top and pop it back in the oven for five minutes. And what that does is, once it's sort of cooled down a little bit when it's finished, is it gives a nice sort of little crust, crunchy topping to the tart. So it's really yummy. And you can see just how much it's puffed up. That will drop. It will drop down because it's the heat at the moment as well that's keeping that risen that high so it will drop down gosh the smell is lovely actually so we're just going to sprinkle that tablespoon of caster sugar over the top you just get a lovely waft of lemon as you take it out it's really nice so now we're just going to pop that back in for just five minutes and then it'll be done okay so it's had that five minutes there we go, you can see how lovely and golden it is on top. Like I said, that will drop down, you'll see once it's cooled a little bit and it's, it's just all that hot, hot air that's keeping it that sort of risen at the moment. But it just looks beautiful. Now what you need to do, you can eat this either warm or cold, but 
to, to, to eat it warm, you really just need to leave it for kind of half an hour. Just let it settle, because at the moment you'll see there's still a bit of wobble going on. So we just need to let that cool down a little bit. Like I said, give it half an hour and then we will come back and we will try it. Okay, so I'm ready to try it. I've got a nice slice and I've put just some pouring cream on it. You can obviously use custard if you wanted to do that. I've just gone for pouring cream this time, just for a change. And I've just got a nice little slice, so let's give it a go. Mmm! It's really light actually. It's not heavy at all. So if you prefer, you know, a lighter pudding, it's very lemony. The texture is not like sponge at all. It's more like a, if you've ever had a curd tart, it kind of reminds me of that. And also lemon tart, it's like a mixture of both of those. So it's really delicious and it's great cold as well. Again, just with chilled pouring cream or creme fraiche, if you prefer creme fraiche, that kind of, it's got that sharp edge, hasn't it? So really, really delicious. I'd love to know what you all think when you make it. So get baking and let us know what you think. And we will see you next time for some more Bakery Bears Pudding Club. Now that is delicious. It was. It's light and lemony and you know the type of thing which you could demolish the whole thing in one sitting it's genuinely right up my alley mm, that's lovely. i love lemon tart and i love curd tarts and that's really what it's like it's like yeah. a combination of yeah. the two and what i love so much about that is perhaps and that's certainly what i found in the research that i've seen we've got to the bottom of why i don't know if other countries do this too but we tend to call anything, certainly you do, mm. that comes after a main course, a pudding. And Mr. Allenson, Dr. Allenson did that because that's what the public expected to see written on the page. Yep. We have puddings, you know, we have spotted dick and, you know, all those different things. Jam roly poly. Yeah, and, they're puddings. Yeah. So we want a pudding. Give us a pudding. Even though it's not, it's a tart. And as well, if you follow the link in the show notes, you can get to a page with all the ingredients details on too, just like we've done with all our, um, our Pudding Club episodes yep. so far. But that was lovely. Thank you so much. Lovely. Just delicious. Puff pastry actually made a big difference as opposed to like a normal short crust. It was lovely, the puff. Yeah, it makes it lighter, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, which is, do you know... <laughs> Because you don't like pastry, do no, you? Really? No, no. Too heavy for you. Yeah, but I've... that didn't feel heavy. No, no, no. I, you know... It, it's just, mm. it's a lovely, it's a lovely thing. And so different to the ones we've made so mm. far. Mm. So thank you. Mm. Kay Jones, what's off your needles? I do have some things. Well, so you always have something. Even though I've got hardly anything on the needles, it feels like, I have finished some things. The first thing you've not even seen, because I started it and finished it in between the last one and this one. And do you know what's been so frustrating? What? Is ever since you've washed that, I've needed to wear it. Oh. Right, well, you can now. You'll need to wear it Because, you know, now. we've gone through a period of warmth with, oh, with some sort was... of African winds that were yeah. blowing. <laughs> so now it's... it's Although today, whilst it's wet and windy, it is still quite warm. But the past couple of days, it's been really nippy. It has. Really nippy. Perfect hat weather. Yeah. But I couldn't wear it. No. Because it was all washed for you. I know. And here Keeping it is. It nice. I've knit down another running hat. Shall I put it on? Put it on. And... I've I brought been... you a blocker. Oh yeah. It's on there top of my neck. <laughs> I used um, a new yarn, I believe this is, from Opal. <laughs> it's a guy playing basketball. It is. I want to know what precisely he has on that's been knit. He might have socks on, I suppose. Maybe. But it's a, a new, I believe it's a new yarn from Opal. It's called Sport Exclusive. And the colourway I've got, I believe it's Fireman is the actual name of it, but it's 9564. And I got mine from Woolstack. I get a lot of my opal from Woolstack here in the UK. They're, they're brilliant, brilliant service. I get needles from there as well, really quick turnaround. So I bought this and actually 
I think, I wonder if all of the colours are more subdued on this base. The reason it's called Sport is because of what it's made up of. And I will tell you when I find... And those Vega. signs there, it's poly polyamide, isn't it? Well, no, it's not that. It's right. something else. Yeah. This, it, that, it's that showing that it's breathing. sort of like a temperature control thing. And that it that would helps be amazing. the actual fibre content helps with maintaining an even temperature, maybe. It yeah. lets keeps heat in but lets it out when it needs yeah. to that kind of thing which is what running gear tends to do yeah so if that if it does that i'll be such a happy right. bunny so it's 60 percent wool 15 percent polyamide which is just nylon uh, but then it's 25 percent polypropylene right. and i think it's the polypropylene yeah that that, is that's in sport. my shorts right and tops and stuff right mm. so it's that that i think makes it the sort of sport thing i used about half a skein i think i've got sort of half of it left I didn't enjoy this colourway, I will be absolutely honest. I thought it was the most boring colour that I've ever knit in my whole life. When I chose it on the website, the colours just looked a lot brighter. And even on the picture, even on here, they look a lot brighter. And I just wonder if it's the base that, you know, when they dye it, it maybe doesn't come up as bright because there's not as much wool in it. So you saw it on his head, but there is. I mean, it probably doesn't quite, you know, people are going to say that's not boring. But it just didn't inspire me, you know. They're just not really my colours, these at all. So I knit it really quick. <laughs> that, was, that was the only way I could cope with it, if you like. I just knit it quickly, and that's why it sort of started and finished. So this is the kind of formula that I now use for Dan's running hat. I use a three millimetre needle, fingering weight yarn. I cast on 136 stitches knit a couple of inches of rib and then knit to about seven inches total length and then just do some decreases. So really simple. And I spent a lot of time looking for the perfect running hat and I couldn't find it off the mm. shelf because they were either just stupid material and you look yeah. like an idiot or they were just too warm that they were built for, you know, like really cold mm. weather. Whereas these aren't. Just we light, all know how great wool is, don't we? That's the first one. I can't imagine I'm going to use this other half. <laughs> yeah, you will. When I wear that one out then. Oh, well, I'll just keep it in my stash. Well done. You know. Ask me, ask me. Dan Jones. Yes. What's off your needles? Look at this. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, actually. This is the Declan's Hats Free Pattern. I've just done Ooh. a tutorial series all about knitting more complex cables because there's cabling in there that is more complex than the Samantha. Lovely. So it's a great pattern to knit anytime, really, because oh, it, it's gorgeous. a lovely hat. Gorgeous. Have you put it on? Or can you? You can't. No, not your hair. my hair. It's really going to suit, actually. You, I really want. I really want it. Am I allowed to keep it? Yeah, of course. You can do whatever you like. Oh, it's gorgeous it's colour. Don't you think it's a gorgeous colour? I thoroughly enjoyed knitting this. It's the third time I've knit it, and the first two times there's been elements to it which I've struggled mm, with. This one's perfect. Coming to this a third time and sitting down with Kay's superb instruction, and also you know focusing on the task in hand. I really feel like my cables have, have mm. jumped up a level. Sometimes you do something and you're just going through the motions. You're just reading it off the pattern. They're perfect. You're not actually learning stuff. I think as well, when you want to nail a technique, you need to think about that. And you need to think, right, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm really going to think about what I'm doing. And that way then it's more likely to go into your head. Well, that's mm. what I did. And mm. I feel a lot happier with that. Still one or two little things that I'd like to get better at, but well, like it's it taken me. Perfect to me. From I might place. make a bubble actually. With yeah, the I rest saw someone. The yarn. I saw someone. Because you have some left over, won't you? I saw someone had done a bubble because so, a few people have been um, making. I might make a, following the uh, series and making this along with me. And yeah, I might make a pom pom. Someone had put a pom pom on, and it did look really lovely. Yeah, I think yeah. I'll do that. Cool. And the yarn's gorgeous. It's um, what was the colourway? Flash dance, wasn't yeah. it? Madeleine Tosh. It bled like the devil in the water. Right. I had a feeling it would because it's Madeleine Tosh, and you know their colours are notorious for for bleeding. I suppose it's because it's so vibrant. It's very saturated and very vibrant. Mm. But I literally, it was barely even warm water. And as soon as I dropped it in, it went pink. The, you know, the water just went this sort of pinky purple colour. But it's, it's fine, you know. I could have put some citric acid in there. What I really love about this pattern is how the cables flare out of the ribbing. Mm. I think that's, and you know, how the, the, the ribbing there carries on mm. up the hat. I think it's a really clever pattern. As I say, it's okay. free. And as Tudora series, so you can go make one now mm. along with us if you would like. What else is off your needles? Well, I've finished a pair of socks for Dan. 
and I think I've knit them to I think I've knit the foot too long <laughs> you can quite believe that I've finished the opal scrappy socks and they're this, ugly, they're nice. no and this is what I was talking about when I was comparing opals the this doesn't feel the same as that older one I won't go on about it any longer but it was knitting these that made me realize I think what ha what happened certainly was that I didn't count my rows correctly on each. There should be 10 rows in each and there's a few of them where there's 11. So I think that's where I've gone wrong with the, it's slightly long. Dan's foot is 12 and a half inches long and I normally knit to, I think it's about 10 inches and then do the toe. But these measure exactly 12 and a half inches, which is the length of his foot. So they'll, well, look, they'll fit. Yeah, I mean, it, they're probably fine. But there's no sort of negative fit, if you like. I did the umbrella toe, which is the one that's in my drippity drop pattern. I've never done that before for Dan's socks. And I think these will fit you nicely because mm. your toes are such weird shapes. Thanks. But everything else is the same as what I normally do. 72 stitches, I did 50 rows for the leg and then um, just knit down to the toe, usual heel flap and gusset. And these were with the Opal Christmas Advent Calendar mini skeins. Well, at least you've and used I, those now. Well, well, I've still got loads left. Right. Um, but these, I haven't weighed these actually, but they usually, Dan's socks usually weigh about 90 grams. So I suspect that that's what they weigh. So I'm very glad to have them finished. And I think now I look at them, they don't quite look, you know, they just, look fun don't they so hopefully they're not too big I kept stressing and I was like oh I'm gonna rip back the toe and take out a few rows and re-knit it and you're like oh they'll be fine yeah so I didn't in Thank the you. end there you go thank you very much you're welcome done all done time for something very special yay you may be wondering why we we normally split up pudding club don't we we have a first part and a second part just like when we do the new adventures well we put it out all in one today because now it's time for us to go and take a look around the Spring Into Wool show. Wow. And it's a little bit different to how we did it last year. Last year it was very impromptu. We just, you know, record a little bit to show you. This time it was a lot more planned. So I think it's time we headed over to Kay, who is on the scene at the Spring Into Wool show. Thanks very much, Dan. And here we are. We are at Spring Into Wool at Leeds. So, should we get inside and see if we can find anybody to have a lovely chat to? show. Nick, yeah. how did it come about? Well, it was my wife. It was my wife who uh, did wool and we went to wool shows and we, we have a stall. Yeah. So uh, she was always saying she'd love to do it. Right. And um, the opportunity came. Right. We, were, we, we used to pass this school right. and I used to say, if we ever did a wool show, that would be fantastic. And we found out that we could do it here. Well, so I've got to say, the venue is absolutely perfect. Yeah, I know, yeah. Did you know what it was like inside here? No, today? no, just passed it by the street, came in, and as soon as we saw it, it was like, wow. And how long from initial thought to show happening did it... Five months. Wow. The first show was five months. Right. Yeah, which was a, a bit of a, a rush to get it all done and get the marketing done and the right. advertising. Right. But yeah, we did it and it, yeah. So are you local then? No, I actually grew up about, well, almost a stone's throw from here. Right. Uh, but we now live in Nottingham. Right. But with my, my family are all here and we, we, we're up here a lot. Well, so is that the reason why? Because you're, you're launching a second show, aren't you? We are, down south. And so, is that, is that yeah. more local to you? No, not it. No, no. Um, it's New, Newbury, which is in Berkshire. Oh, no, we're in Nottingham. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a lot more. That's yeah, amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So you, you've done two shows, nowhere near your home. <laughs> there is actually a show at Nottingham, so it's just started. And we had thought, I mean, before that one, uh, to do one, but we didn't really find the venue. Right. And the venue is crucial, it we is, think. It is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've got to say, I think it's the venue that just really, it's just so lovely. Yeah. Having a canteen there and yeah, the, the and space that, yeah. is great and it's yeah. all. Nick, important question now. Yeah. Do you knit? <laughs> no, I don't knit. <laughs> Do you crochet? <laughs> no. I'm a big helper to a wife who does. We've got to get you knitting. Lo lots of, yeah. Funnily enough, I have not admitted this to my family. I used to knit when I was a teenager. Oh, come on. I don't know why, because my mum never knit. <laughs> I've, no, I've just got a recollection of sitting there in front of the telly knitting. I'll take up knitting. And, yeah, and I don't know how long it lasted, but don't, yeah, that's a very odd thing for a teenager. So this year, big year, because you launched yeah, the second day. that was a big thing to go to two days. And but we thought, we didn't want it, it was quite busy last year on the Saturday. We didn't, didn't want it to get like massively busy. And it's just worked out perfectly. Well, I think again, you, it's, it's just been perfect today. Absolutely yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So have you got next year booked already? Not yet, but we will, we will be doing, I think, if they'll have us back. Good. Yes. Good. That's great. That's great. Master Dyer behind the very <laughs> stunning, truly hooked yarn. It's Verity. Hello. Yes, Verity. This is gorgeous yarn. Thank you very much. How, how did it all begin for you? How did you start dyeing? I, well, the business kind of started by accident about six and a half years ago. I lost my dad suddenly and learned to crochet the same weekend as a distraction. Um, put pictures up on Facebook, friends and family were like, oh, will you make me this, will you make me this? So that's how the business started. And then I got more and more people asking for more unique colourways that I couldn't necessarily source. So I looked at dyeing my own and then it just all went from right. there. And wh where are you based? We're in Nottingham right. and I work in our house. Right. It used to be in the kitchen and then we moved house and then everything went into the garage. So right. I now have a workspace and I can close the door and then it's done and I can go back in the house and there's, well, no, the dining room is full of wool as well. But right. in theory, there's a workspace and a home space. Right. How did you learn to dye? YouTube. Brilliant. Learned everything I know from YouTube. Right. Um, we do now have a lovely little Facebook group that I'm the admin, one of the admins of, where you can ask for advice and hints and tips and what have you. But generally speaking, we direct everybody to YouTube because there are so many amazing tutorials on there to show you what you need to know. And once you've got the basics, it's just a case of playing around finding your own style, finding what you like and what works for you. Do you knit as well or are you just yeah. a crochet? I knit as well, yes. Who taught you to knit? Was that a YouTube thing too? Kind of, yeah. I vaguely recall my granny teaching me to knit when I was about six or seven. Um, but being the only kid in the playground knitting while everyone else was playing, it didn't really last very long. And then um, one of my friends owns a yarn shop. I met her through the shop and she taught me the odd bit of bob. I picked up things off YouTube and then Facebook as well. You go in a group, you say, oh, I'm really struggling with this thing. Somebody will say, oh, no, you need to do it like this and this and this and this. Yeah. And online community is amazing for learning. It yeah, it is. How did you find out about this show? I was approached Where? by Nick and Natasha right. at another show. Right. Um, they asked me if I would be interested in coming, and I said yes. Um, the only thing I said to them was that I might be <laughs> imminently giving birth at the time of the show last year, which luckily I didn't. He waited. Um, but we, we came along and it was brilliant. And of course, this then, it, it's your second time here. Absolutely, yes. So you must like it. Love it. Absolutely so, so love it. We. So it, we. It's really nice being in a lovely, bright, vibrant room. Yeah. The atmosphere is great. Yeah. Um, Mez, my husband, he particularly enjoys the nice flat floors to yeah. set everything up on, which yeah. makes such a difference for us because we're not worrying about things falling over. And... Does he knit? He does not. We have to rectify he, he that. He does not knit. We will be rectifying that. We've, we've 
kind of made an agreement a few years ago, sort of as a bit of a joke, that I was secretly going to learn to drive right. and he was secretly going to learn to knit. Now, I've not been learning to drive <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he's not been learning to knit, so <laughs> maybe one day it'll happen. Wasn't that fun? My goodness. I think with the growth and the popularity of the show, adding that second day just m made the numbers exactly right. It was still spacious, but busy enough. And talking to the stallholders, absolutely all of them were really happy to be there and you know, looking forward to next year, as are we. So I think it's back to Kay in the studio. Wasn't it fantastic? We loved it. We had a really good day. We really did. And it was so nice. You know, I'm sure there'll, there'll be loads of you out there who've been to shows. Really nice to talk to the organisers mm. and get their sort of mm. thought processes and how it all came about. But then also to get to chat to, we, we spoke to a few we actually. We did speak to a few, yeah. We spoke yeah. to Siobhan's Crafts. She's a lovely lady. Yes, yeah. and she's going to be in Knitability really soon. Yeah. And also, you know, as you saw there, we, we had a really nice chat with Verity from Truly Hooked. Yeah. And, you know, what a stunning stand they had. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, her yarn's gorgeous. And really nice to, to see her there with her husband. Yeah. And to see her there with, with one of her children too. Yeah, and she was <clears> pregnant last, last year. year. Yeah. She was heavily pregnant. She was overdue, I believe. And I spoke to her last year, actually, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Which so it was really great. And know. there was the bump. He was there and he was very cute. He had fabulous red hair. Now, we will be having a competition too, won't we, for their Southern show? Because Nick oh, very yes. kindly said he that did. he was going to give us tickets. Yes, and where did you say it was? Newbury, is it? Newbury. Yes. Yeah, so if you're in the Newbury area, I believe it's in September. Yeah. So um, later on this year. Later on this year, we'll, we'll a have a giveaway for some tickets for yeah. that. Yeah, which yeah. would be lovely. And in the next issue of Knitability, we have a show diary by the lovely Michelle Jakes. Yes. From Spring Into All as well. Yeah. So it'd be great to, that's the reason why we didn't actually interview someone who was going to the event, because Michelle was gonna do, yep. you know, she went to the event completely separate to us, so it's gonna be really interesting to get she her She went thoughts. on the Saturday, actually, yeah. we went on Sunday, so yeah. we missed each other, but. But perfect for, you know, yeah. th this experiment yeah. of talk to the organizer, talk to a yep. stall holder, and talk to someone who went to the show as well. Finally, Brilliant. it's time, I never thought we'd get here to the end of it. This has been a long one. Well, it? it may have done, but I may have done a superb editing job. Oh, right, okay. We've been sat here many, many hours. We have. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, First of all, oh, climb every mountain. Oh, right, okay. I thought you were going to say something else. Update time. Yeah. Oh, yes. Team Call, you covered this month, last month, in April, 1,805... 0.84 feet. Oh, for goodness sake, I can't believe yeah, you do those It's points. all important. That's the best month the runners and the walkers have had. Is this because Sarah's training for the marathon? This is because Dr. Holmes <laughs> is training for a marathon. Now, everyone, Jeez. to be honest, has stepped up the pace, which is just brilliant. As the weather is warming up in mm. certain parts of the world, clearly people are becoming more active. So that's superb. So we're not, compared to last year with the, 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 the fog along, by this time, the knitters had gone. Mm. They were miles ahead of us. Mm. This time, we're, at least we're still on the same mountain. Yep. We are. We're only a few thousand feet behind. So, where are the knitters? Where is Team Fines? This month, sadly, you also have you had your best month Come ever. on. 3,162 feet, which wow. is a total of 11,034 feet this wow. year. Wow. That's so amazing, isn't it? You are actually 101 feet off the top of Everest. Really? Yes. <gasps> I was really pleased about that, actually, because I was worried that you would have... That's amazing. You, 100 you, feet. We're just 100 feet. We can see yeah, the, I know. We can I know. see the summit. You can, you can. Well, it depends. It might be foggy up there. Hopefully well, it's cleared. <laughs> I can see it. It's not. It's a yeah, clear day. It's clear. It's beautiful. Mm. 101 feet off the top. So by next month you will be climbing Kilimanjaro. We will. K2. Which isn't, no, 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 it's a different mountain. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, sorry. The last time you said, because I questioned oh, it, and you what said, What is K2? Go, it's a different mountain to Kilimanjaro. Maybe we should go at K2. I, well, I don't know. I know that, because I said that, didn't I? I said, are you sure that's the same mountain? And you said it was, and then a few people in the comments said, no, it's not. Right. So. I think we should go at K2. I don't even know where K2 is then. But we can say K2 lots, and that sounds like you're with us. Oh, right. That's like when I was nine. And Doctor Who was very popular. Everybody called me K9. Yes, <laughs> I got that until I was about 14. Oh, no. <laughs> so remember, 
if you are a runner or a walker, anyone can come and join uh, Team Cool. So get in touch, send me a rubbery message, Instagram message, and you can join Team Cool and join in with the walking or the running team. Someone actually, uh, and I won't embarrass this person by telling them who it is, but we use the RunKeeper app, and within that app there are groups, and within that group you can see where you are on the leaderboard, and someone who was involved in the Phileas Fog along and involved with this didn't realise that there was a group there where she could see how everyone Aww. was doing. You can also chat as well. So it's a real community event. We might be all over the world, but runners, walkers, you can go into the app on RunKeeper, which is a free app, and you can access a group, and you can talk to everyone else who's oh, taking part cool. in this, which is really cool. Of course, the knitting side of it is for patrons only, and of course there is, uh, of course, chat rooms yep. on our Ravelry page. There's a chat thread, yeah. and there's an FO thread. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, drippity drop prizes. Yes. The Drippity Drop Cal finished a couple of days ago, so thank you so much to everybody that put their socks in there. We had quite a lot of finished, finished beautiful socks, and I have drawn for prizes. The reason I've drawn it already is because we had a lot of chatter in there, and I do always put, you know, a chatter thread and an FO thread, but you know it happens there was just quite a lot of chatter people get too and excited don't yeah they? i think they do and they want to say oh they're gorgeous so and i totally understand that but try but not the, to try not to if, if you can because the the problem is even if you delete it and someone who did chatter a lot realized they'd done that and very kindly went in and deleted them the problem is it takes out that number so when you draw that number so when i draw that number it no longer exists and that happened twice when i was doing the drawings so what it means is that someone who would have won someone who would have won in that position didn't didn't so it does affect the result if you do chatter in the thread so that's the way, that's the reason i've already drawn it and i'm not doing it live because it would have taken a long time yeah. you know to to go through all that and it's a bit boring watching somebody draw and then it be a deleted post. So who's won what? Right. I've got three prizes. Excellent. The first one, actually, I haven't got to show you because it was the stitch markers from lovely Melissa from Melia Bella. She sent some to me and then she's going to send the winner a set directly. So I've drawn for that one first of all and the winner, sorry, it was numbers 2 to 74 was, was the range. The first winner was number 9. So that's the person who's won the stitch markers from Melissa, and that was Mary in Washington, and she is M. Gladue on Ravelry. So Mary in Washington, would you send me a message with your full name and address? I will then pass that on to Melissa, and she will send out your prize. Lovely. Well done, they're beautiful. I think you will love those. The next prize was for the Mondim yarn. You know, if you remember, I had this beautiful bright pink skein of the Portuguese yarn. It's non-superwash sock yarn. It's really, really um, woolly and lovely. Not really, really woolly, but it's, it's, an, it's unusual in that it's a non-superwash. So I thought it might be nice for someone to get this who maybe, you know, wouldn't have the opportunity. This one was won by number 66, and that's Vicky in Colorado. So this is going all the way Yay. to Colorado, which I think is brilliant. She is Phoenix and New on Ravelry. So Vicky, again, send me a message with your full name and address and I'll get that sent out to you. Well done. And then the last prize was a skein of my yarn and it's in the Sirius colourway, which is my current obsession of ones that I'm dying. I just love it. I absolutely love this colourway. And this is on the Silver Sparkle base. So this was won by number 13. Lucky for some. Yes. And that's Olivia in Florida. Whoa. She is O L Frain, F R A I N on Ravelry. So Olivia, get in touch, just confirm your full name and address, and I will get that sent out to you. I know we know you, but just if you just want to just contact me just to let me know you've seen this, and then I'll get that lovely yarn sent out to you. Cool. So well done everyone. Thank yes. you so much. I just purchased one thing in the past couple of weeks and I got some more of the onion yarn, you know, the nettle sock yarn, because I loved it so much. Lovely pink. Yeah, I know. Wait for me. No. So I got this from Wild and Woolly in the UK. The service was fantastic. I've never used Wild and Woolly before. I ordered it one day, it came the next day. You can't get any better than that, can you? And it was packaged beautifully and just fantastic service. So it's the nettle sock yarn. And I've got two skeins and the colourway is just pink. I believe it's just called pink. 
number 1013. And I love it because if you can see, it's heathered. Can you see how lovely and heathered that is? You can see. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. And I love the colour. <gasps> Such a bright, happy colour. So, yeah. Cool. Maybe. So, ladies and gentlemen, next episode. It's episode 100. 100. Now, the celebrations have actually already started because we're putting out a series as we do something very special yep. for the next three weeks. I got too excited and I actually put out the first episode on Monday when it oh, should have been you? on Tuesday. Oh. But the next two episodes of this preparation for episode 100 are on Tuesday and the following Tuesday. With then a very special surprise in episode 100. There's going to be a link to something very special in episode 100 for everyone to, to go and watch, should they choose to. A, a glance back in time, perhaps. Yeah. Yes, I shall say nothing more. But not only that. Yeah. Kay is also... I'm also doing something. Very I'm not, special. I'm not going to say what it is. Our she patrons, isn't. Our patrons do know what it is. Yes. Because I'll let them in on the secret. But this um, this will be something and this which is, everyone... This is something for everyone. Yes. So another, that's another special little something that I'm doing that we will show you and tell you about in episode 100. Yes. Yeah. It's certainly an interesting time for, I think, both of us, like we alluded to just slightly earlier. Looking back can be hard, and it is proving slightly hard in certain, you know, in certain lights. But also as well, it's good to look back because then you can drive forward. And, you know, as I've said already today, mm -hmm. I'm, it's going to be great to have a really lovely episode 100. We will be going out on a very special new adventure. We will succeed this time in getting fish and chips on the beach. Oh, yes, yes. We will succeed. Yes, we we tried last series, we didn't we? We are determined. We tried last series and we failed. We did. This series... We will not fail. Join us because we will do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, episode 100, two weeks' time. Don't miss it. And as I said on the pop show... On Sunday, there will be a special after-show party accessible for all Silver Plus podcast patrons uh, the Sunday after that show goes out. So it's the yeah. 20th of May. Very special pop for our 100th episode after-show party. And that's quite close to my birthday as well. Yes. And then, of course, we've had Pudding Club today. Pudding Club will be back in episode 101. So thank you so much for watching. I had my hair done. Yes, she did. <laughs> Who noticed? <laughs> Did anybody notice my hair's different? <laughs> no, they're saying no. <laughs> I wasn't going to It's like it, but... my wife is back. Her hair used to be this colour. It did. This and is then... kind of my natural colour. It's a little bit darker than my natural colour. You decided that you wanted to go blonde and had some bad experiences. I had in a really awful experience with having highlights in last year. I couldn't even talk about it. It was that traumatic. And I just but had to wait for it to grow. And I spent many hours in the hairdresser. What's amazing is, it, it, I mean, it is like going back in time because your just, hair used to be like this. It, yeah, it did. Full of body Cur and colour. Yeah, and, and it, it basically, I, I don't even want to talk about the destruction of my hair with bleach. But after many hours in the hairdresser and many pounds spent, it's fixed. Yeah. Thank goodness. So, and I'm much happier with it. She is. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I'm such a lucky boy. Yeah. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you on Tuesday. There's a lovely bird just fluttering. He's landed on the fence oh, and he's it? looking around. I love birds. Oh. There's loads of them. Look. Oh, they're sparrows. Spar they're so, cute. Don't be mean. I know. They're, they're lovely, lovely sparrows. There were some sparrows on there yesterday. I think right. we've got an ivy growing up that fence and I think they're getting all the little bugs out of it. Well, we shall thank them for that. Yes. So thank you so much for watching, folks. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back on Tuesday with yeah. the, the next of our special series as we run into episode 100. Kay will then be back on Thursday. You've got some reviews and some uh, central double decrease oh, tutorials right. coming out yes. and all sorts. And then the week after that, we will be back with episode 100. Do not no, miss it. It'll be fun. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you then. Thanks, everyone. Take you to fabulous places of which their favorites they'll share. You better buy a pad and get yourself a bakery bear. You'll find yourself in a castle watching the bakery bears. It never feels like
like a hassle to sit and watch the creepy repairs. What's on your shelf for once in?